Question 3 from Section 2 of the 2018 Higher Physics Examination. It's a momentum question. A student sets up an experiment to investigate a collision between two vehicles on a frictionless air track. The diagram is shown and it's not drawn to scale. Vehicle X of mass 0.75 kg is travelling to the right along the track. Vehicle Y of mass 0.5 kg is travelling to the left along the track with a speed of 030 meters per second. The vehicles collide and they move off separately. A computer displays a graph showing the velocity of vehicle X from just before the collision to just after the collision. And we're asked to find that the velocity of vehicle Y after the collision is 0.42 meters per second. So where do we get the velocity of vehicle X from? Well we get it from the graph which has been uh, born from the motion sensor. Now, before you actually start the question, get to know the scale of the graph. If we look very closely, we can see that 10 squares on the velocity axis is equal to 0 0.10 metres per second. So that means that one square is 0 0.01 metres per second. So the initial velocity of vehicle X is 0 0.50 metres per second. We get that from this part up here. And then there is the collision. And... The graph drops down, which means that the velocity of vehicle X is dropped down to just two squares above the time axis, which must mean the velocity is 0 0.02 metres per second. So we've now got the velocities of, of, the, of vehicle X, and because they're positive velocities, they must be moving to the right. Remember, in these type of problems, anything that moves to the right is plus and anything that moves to the left is negative. So velocity will be positive for vehicle X. Uh, in the whole of the experiment. Now, a momentum question is a classic question, and we have to remember the classic definition of the momentum, any collision or explosion involved momentum, is that the total momentum before, and I'm going to write that as TMB, total momentum before, must be equal the to, to the total momentum afterwards. Now, write that down as TMA. So total momentum before equals total momentum afterwards, provided there's no external forces acting on both of the vehicles, and we can write that down. Now, be careful. Momentum is a vector quantity, so anything momentum quantity moving to the right, we treat as positive, and any momentum quantity going to the left, we treat that as negative. Now, all we have to do to solve this problem is to set up a small table, which will have all the data in it, and we can go ahead and work out what this velocity of vehicle Y is after the collision. Now to do that, we have a table like this. We have before the collision, X and Y, and after the collision, X and Y. And all we have to do now is fill all the details in. We know that uh, vehicle X has got a mass of 0 0.75 kilograms. And vehicle Y has got a mass of 0 0.50 kilograms. We'll just fill that in underneath each before and after. No mass falls off the vehicle, so we can assume that before and after the masses are the same. So there we have the masses now put into the table. Next is the velocities. We know that vehicle X is going to be moving initially with a velocity of 0 0.5, 0 0.50 meters per second to the right and vehicle Y is going to be moving with 0 0.30 meters per second to the left. Now that's the first part of our table done. After the collision we know that vehicle X is moving in the same direction because the velocity is plus, positive, and its velocity is going to be 0 0.02 metres per second. And velocity y, we don't know where it is, we don't know what direction it's going in, but we trust our maths and say that the velocity will be v of some value. Now we know how to work out the momentum of anything. The momentum of, an, of a particular object is its mass times its velocity. So all we have to do is underneath each of these little pictures, we put in the momentum. Momentum equals mass times velocity. So the momentum of the first trolley X, we can put that in brackets, will be 0 0.75, its mass, multiplied by 0 0.50. 
No, here comes the tricky part. Because vehicle Y is moving to the left, we have to subtract momentum. It's going in the opposite direction. So momentum will be given by the value of 0 0.50 multiplied by 0 0.30. Now I can tidy it up and do the calculation on that and end up with the total momentum before the collision is the sum of these two uh, numbers is going to be 0 0.2. Five and the units of momentum is kilograms meters per second. So we've now got the total momentum before the collision. The total momentum after collision is found the same way. We put a bracket around the vehicle X and it's 0 0.75, it's mass, times 0 0.02, it's velocity after the collision. And vehicle Y, we don't know what direction it's going in. So we just assume it's going in a positive direction and say add on mass 0 0.50 multiplied by v and that will be the total momentum after the collision so what we can do now is write down total momentum after the collision and that's going to be equal to 0 0.075 times 0 0.02 is going to give you 0 0.015 and we have to add on 0.5v. So we now have the total momentum after the collision. Remember the initial statement, the total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. So we just set these two equations equal. 0 0.225 must be exactly the same as 0 0.015 plus 0.5v. We have a little bit of rearranging to do. So if we take 0 0.015 over to the other side, we have 0 0.225. Take away 0 0.015. And that's going to be equal to this character all on its own, 0 0.5v. Do the calculation and just swap things about. We have 0 0.5v. I'm just taking 0 0.5 of this side. Equals 0. 225 take away 0 0.015 and we're going to have 0 0.21 meters per second. So therefore V is going to be equal to 0 0.21 divided by 0 0.5 and it's going to give you an answer of 0 0.42 meters per second. And because it's a plus number, it must be moving to the right. And that's as proved the first part of the question. Part B of the question. Determine the impulse on vehicle Y during the collision. Now to determine the impulse of an object, we have to find its change of momentum. That's the key phrase that we have to know to solve this problem. The impulse equals the change of momentum. So we can find the change of momentum of vehicle Y. We can work out its impulse. So let's go back to the diagram we had before and afterwards, and we know that's vehicle X, we know that's vehicle Y, vehicle X and vehicle Y. And we're only interested in vehicle Y this time, and we know that before the collision, it was travelling to the left with a velocity of 0 0.30 metres per second, and its mass was 0 0.5 kilograms. After the collision, its mass was 0 0.5 kilograms, and it was travelling to the right this time with a velocity of 0 0.42 metres per second. So that is the situation we had before in the first part of the question. Now to find the impulse, we've just got to find the change of momentum. So what was the momentum of Y before the collision? Well, we'll just say momentum P before the collision is just simply going to be equal to, and be very careful here, mass, put it in bracket first, 0 0.5 times minus 0 0.3 meters per second because the velocity is moving to the left therefore the momentum will be negative so the momentum of trolley y that's the only one we're looking at will be given a value of minus 0 0.15 and the units of momentum kilogram meter per second now what was momentum after the collision well, momentum after the collision, we do the same thing. PA, momentum after the collision of trolley Y or vehicle Y, was equal to its mass, 
put in bracket first, 0 0.5 multiplied by 0 0.42 and we get momentum after the collision to be equal to 0 0.21 kilogram meter per second. So we have the momentum before and we have the momentum afterwards. So to find the change in momentum, all we have to do is take the momentum before, so change of momentum of vehicle Y is going to be equal to the momentum after, momentum after, take away the momentum before. So that's going to give us a value, if we work this out, of momentum afterwards is 0 0.21 take away bracket and here comes the hard part momentum is minus so it's going to be take away minus 0 0.15 kilogram meters per second so we do that question we get 0 0.36 kilograms meters per second but we asked to find the impulse and the impulse units are newton seconds and the change momentum units are kilogram meter per second so the impulse given to this object the impulse will be equal to the following impulse is going to be equal to 0 0.36 and change the units to newton seconds question 3 part c explain how the student would determine whether the collision was inelastic or elastic. Now notice the word explain there. You don't have to do any calculations. You just have to explain how you would prove that the collision was elastic or inelastic. In order to do that, you must know the definition of an elastic and an elastic collision. So first of all, let's take a look at an elastic collision. For an elastic collision to take place, the total momentum is conserved, which in other words means total momentum before should equal total momentum afterwards. But be careful, momentum is a vector in this case, so you have to take into consideration the directions of the quantities. The other condition is that the total kinetic energy is conserved. Now, kinetic energy is a scalar quantity, which means you just simply add up all the kinetic energy before and all the kinetic energy afterwards and see if it's the same. If it's the same, it's conserved. It satisfies the two main criteria and if you have an elastic collision. Now, for an inelastic collision, you're going to have this situation. For an inelastic collision, the total momentum is conserved as always, which means total momentum before equals total momentum afterwards. Remember, momentum is a vector, so you have to take into consideration whether it's going to the right or going to the left. But if you work out the total kinetic energy before, just simply adding up the kinetic energy, remember the kinetic energy of an object we'll call uh, Ek is equal to just simply its half, its mass, times its speed squared. That's the definition for the kinetic energy of a moving mass m with speed v. So if you work out the total kinetic energy before the collision, just by adding up each individual kinetic energy, and compare it to the total kinetic energy afterwards, if it's different, if it's energy being lost, we say that the collision is inelastic. So that's the condition for this one. Total momentum must always be conserved. But in an inelastic collision, the total kinetic energy is not conserved, which means it's different. Physics is wonderful! Physics is cool!